Hello and welcome back to another episode of Timing Through Fundamentals. I'm Dustin Lee, Vice President of Sales at Morrison Container Handling Solutions. Today we're going to learn a little bit more about timing screws and how to implement them with photo eyes so that you can improve your efficiencies. In looking at our setup, you'll notice that we have photo eyes both on the infeed and discharge end, and each of them play a crucial part in the efficiency of your machine. The purpose of the infeed photo eye is to make sure you always have a prime of product on the infeed of your timing screws. So when we talk about a prime, we don't necessarily need back pressure, but we need to make sure that there's a constant queue of containers so that it feeds into that first pocket appropriately. A common mistake that a lot of people do when they first utilize timing screw technology is that they have the timing screw continuously spinning. When you do this and present a random container to it, we call this random feeding, and essentially what you're doing is you've got a, ro a revolving door that's constantly spinning, and you're sending someone with a blindfold to try to walk through it. Sometimes you make it through, sometimes you don't. So by implementing a, a photo eye and into your logic of your, of your program, you can make sure that there's always a prime of product on the infeed of your screw. So when the photo eye is not blocked, as it is right now, the timing screw system shuts off. As soon as the container blocks that photo eye, in the logic it'll tell the, the timing screw to turn on and it'll start feeding down the line. Conversely, on the discharge side, you want to do the exact opposite. So the purpose of the discharge photo eye is to make sure that product doesn't back up into the timing screw, identifying that there's some type of jam downstream. So in a normal running state, you're going to be having the conveyor run and the timing screw system run, and you don't want that photo eye to be blocked. As soon as the photo eye is blocked for a period of time, you then need to tell the timing screw system to shut off because you don't want to create a further jam. Thanks for joining us on another episode of Timing Screw Fundamentals. Hopefully you learned a lot about photo eyes, where to implement them on your timing screws, and how to implement them into your production line. If you have more questions, please make sure to reach out to us on our website or give us a call. Hope to hear from you soon.